we're riding around, doing some wheelies in a mob ride. Hey, we're having a ton of fun. Big red truck with a camera guy. Okay, so they're part of the group, it seems like. Okay. Uh, decent. Whoa, somebody crashed, somebody crashed, somebody crashed, somebody crashed. Avoid, avoid, avoid. Good job, Lucas. I don't think you're a part of the group ride, but you're, you're a crew member here. Good a job on everybody swerving. Let's see what this rider looks like. Are they damaged? Now, we'll talk a little bit more about this. Okay, opening the back. Oh, is it locked? You, you can you can open. <laughs> open the door! Open the door! Open the door! So, anyways, let's go back a little bit. I don't want to see anybody hurt. So, I want to just make this a point right now. I don't want to see anybody hurt. I don't care what you guys do. To, to an extent I you do what you want to do we're all on two wheels here maybe on a Riker you know maybe you know, can am three wheels whatever we should all be taking care of each other doesn't matter what we're doing the main thing here is I want people to be okay I want people to be okay so if you crash I want there to be somebody or I want somebody there to take care of you that's what I'm trying to get at. So when I see people in the back of a truck, I hope and I wish these people would be medically trained. I hope there's somebody or a group of people that go stunt, but have that inclination of, you know what, I want, maybe I want to learn medical and trauma. I love to stunt. I love stunning, but I see so many people getting hurt. I want to get that training, you know, because I'm still going to stunt with them. I'm still going to ride with them. They're still my bros. So I want those people to be a part of the crew because at the end of the day the goal that we have here is to make sure people can get home that's all i care about i don't care if you stunt i don't care if you race you know i'll take care of you if you crash i'll take care of that person if you hit them i'll take care of anybody here i'm going to encourage you not to do it high risk low reward in my eyes but i want you yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. of yourselves so we're riding around here Having some fun. Now, the person up front, take a quick look. So right over here, boop, this person's going to crash, so they failed the wheelie. Now, that's typical in a lot of these group rides. Now, what do we do? How are we going to rescue this rider if we're part of this group? And he landed it, and there is going to be the crash. Now, that truck slammed the brakes. Hopefully, nobody falls out, so they did okay. And there's a lot of damage. Now, this rider right here, not wearing full gear. Now, once again... To be a smart rider, you need to have acquire and utilize personal protective equipment. But if you don't, it doesn't mean you're like an idiot. It just means you're not following the principles that the DDFM crew has set forth for themselves. You don't have to be part of the DDFM crew to be a rider. Uh, these are just a set of principles that, that I want uh, the crew to be a part of. Now, you could be a rescuer. That's cool. So if you can rescue another rider, that's what I care about in this situation i can't get everybody to wear gear i can't get everybody to be situationally aware i can't get everybody to not do these things what i can hopefully get is people to have the training to save another person's life also i want you guys to know how to open up a tailgate all right so we're riding around so ping pingy Wan, that's his name all right so intersection all right okay that person's gonna go anybody behind us no okay good 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 that person's going, look right, you know, Can I whoa. See Shh. What? Can I see no. I would have done the same thing. I would have done the same thing. It's like, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? I didn't invite you over. And, and I get it. He's a kid. He's a kid. Kids want to do that stuff. Kids want to, that scared the crap out of me. And so he asked right there. Let's see what, let's see it. Let's see. He said something. So let's go ahead and take what's good, what's bad, and all that stuff. You know, let's just kind of use this as a, as a great, as a great uh, situation here. So while we're waiting, what I like to do is, and when I say look right, what I like to do, let's say we're turning left, because uh, this is what, the, what we have for review. I like to scan where my path of travel is going to go, because I can't go right now, so I'm going to check road surface hazards. I'm going to just be like, okay, there's no gravel here. Okay, cool. Or it's like, there's a ton of gravel here. There's some gravel here. We got this pothole here. So I'm going to aim for this nice wide turn, and then I'm going to go. I like to do that when I'm waiting. That's what I like to do when I'm waiting. 
Um, so if he's turning right, I'll do it on the right side. But yeah, so you can't go anywhere. You're waiting for all these vehicles to go. I'm checking my mirror just in case. Okay, growl, growl, growl. And then here, and then boom. That's what I do. That's kind of a weird thing. But that's what I like to do. So a uh, little, little tidbit. Don't waste your time just sitting there playing around with your phone. Give me. Give me. <laughs> what? Can I see no. Yeah, I... Hey, that's a good lesson for that kid. Not everybody's, not every stranger is a nice person. Not every stranger is gonna let you do what you need to do. Hey, you know what I mean? Hey, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, he's definitely going. He's going. Oh, sh Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, almost made it. Half the bike. Now, two-thirds of the bike is over the line, but oh well. Part of being a smart rider is acquiring and utilizing personal protective equipment, so make sure you grab yourself a jacket just like this one from RevZill using the link in the description. It's an affiliate link. It helps me out. No extra cost to you. Plus, it lets RevZilla know that the d different crew is pretty badass, and they actually grab some gear. Anyways, click that link. I'll see you soon. All right, here we go. ResNiff. All right, good line of sight. All right, we're doing good. Good space cushion. We're, it looks like we're going to switch lanes. Okay, very good. All right, we're not going to deal with this then. If this is going to be the cigarette, whatever. All right, here we go. Moving again. Side of the vehicle. Did we just swerve into that area? We just... Let's go back. So we're in lane position like one and a half. Okay, we're, we're pretty far from the line, right? So he's, he's getting closer to the hazard. Yeah, we... Hey, rookies. Line. So what does that tell you? Every Clean up. It smells like poo-poo here. Fixation, BJ, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look where you want to go. Yeah, make sure everyone's signing in frequency. The bike will follow your eyes. So look, we're going to look at the car, and we start drifting towards the car. So when I tell you guys don't do that, and I tell you to look for your escape... So he's staring at the vehicle, and he's already going left. Look right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure everyone's signing in. Frequency, go ahead. I'll go ahead and get you some sushi for the room. It's a special Friday evening classroom session. We're going to go over some more crashes, baby. Woo! What do you guys feel like watching, though? Ah, you guys know what I like. Moto Stars. We're going to be watching Moto Stars. But 
I'm always interested in what you guys like to see. I know your crashes get a little crazy, and you know they get a little, little weird. You know you watch too many of them, but the, I mean, the situational awareness on them, oh we, really good to learn from. Really good to learn from. I mean, we got some uh, fundamental skills in the parking lot practices over at MotorcycleTrainingConcepts.com, and you know the YouTube channel and everything. But here at Dan and the Fireman, we have a lot of fun here at the firehouse. You know the best damn online motorcycle community in the world by clicking that join button it's only two dollars a month get the emojis and you get the mustache to start and everything green name and you get access to the crew lounge you know the rookies out here playing video games you know not really learning anything but you know we're gonna go to the classroom let's go ahead and have some fun bring some sushi with you it's friday we're gonna have a good time got myself a little 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 drink a little see-through it's kind of cool anyways Let's get going. No edible food for raining. Oh, no. Can somebody get rain at something? I already know she likes tacos. Go ahead and get her some tacos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whew. What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? Let's get some music going. Let's get something going. You know, let's get let's get some lo-fi, just some easy peasy stuff. Let's just there we come on, let's just get going. There you go, something easy. We're gonna get started. Yeah, make sure you guys grab some sushi. We got plenty of it. You got nice little paper plates and everything. You got some chopsticks. Make sure you guys sign in today. Newbie once again with an amazing, amazing decoration and setup. He was able to tell all the rookies to get everything situated. I made sure they washed their hands. Don't worry. I'm playing my guitar for some time. I hear music for hours. Woo! Lion, it's good to see you again. Yeah, we're gonna get you some we're gonna get you some tacos raining. Riding back from IKEA. What did you get? There's not much you can get at an IKEA that. IKEA is always fun to go to though. It's always fun to go to. You go into the one in uh, obviously in Phoenix. Bill, we did. We fancied this place up. Once again, everybody, if you're brand new to this, if you're brand new to what we do here, is we go over motorcycle crashes and close calls. We use the after action review process and then we figure out what happened, how it happened, what we could do better. And sometimes we find some bad crashes where there's like a medical aspect to it where we can learn what to do in case somebody crashes, you know, if it was no fault or nothing, you know, just it was a bad situation. What do you do to save somebody's life? Because at the end of the day, you make a mistake, you do something wrong or or whatever. It shouldn't mean you die. It shouldn't mean you should be severely injured. So we're going to try our best to rescue other riders. Uh, we're going to be doing as much as we possibly can. We do have we do have the, the rescue cards. Uh, we took them off the shop because I feel like we could do more and we could do better. So we're gonna be doing some more. We're gonna before we put them back on, but we got more moto rescue kits in, and I'm looking into a smaller version. Um, so it'd be cheaper, but it'd be smaller. So you're not gonna get everything in it. I still recommend you have everything that's in the Smart Rider kit, uh, the rescue kit, because that is the thing that it, I made sure that was like the bare minimum. So I, I've been getting people wanting to have something a little bit cheaper. Something a little cheaper, something a little bit, you know, it's about the same size. Maybe you can fit it somewhere different, but I, it's a different bag. It's also going to be a different bag. We're working with the supplier right now to, to figure that out. But we got some more kits in. We got the Smart Rider Basic Training ebook in. I'm looking into possibly getting that uh, printed. And if those are going to be printed, now we're going to be doing a limited run. We're going to do a limited run. Possibly, did I just mute something? I think I just muted it. Let's get, let's get some music going. Come on now. There we go. Uh, possibly do a limited run, sign copies and everything. You know, just stuff like that. Cody K, newer writer here, and appreciate all your knowledge and breakdowns. Hey, man, thank you for being here. Kenneth, this is live. Live. Missed class the last few weeks, but I'm here today ready to learn mythos. I've been, I missed class, too. Uh, for two weeks straight, we didn't have class. 82 people signed in. Is that is that correct? Do I see 82 people signed in? Come on, you got to hit that sign in button which is that like button, everybody. The sign in button is that like button. Uh, earlier today, we were having some issues with uh, some AC units uh, within the firehouse, also internet, uh, just overall crazy craziness going on. So 
I'm glad we're able to get it going. Get this going. Hopefully it's not too bad for you guys. Remember, rescue another rider. It's up on the walls. There's the white, yellow, orange, red, and brown stage. I'm thinking, let's throw some ideas out here, everybody. You know, so these rescue cards, they're really cool. They're really cool and everything, but it's just one card. I feel like making more so you have like a really cool cheat sheet deck. A deck of cards for smart riders. And if you look up on the walls, you see, you see already... You know, we got the rescue cards over here, but over there, the white, yellow, orange, red, and brown stage. Maybe have a card for that. Have a card for patterns. Have a card for uh, pre-start or pre-ride checks. Maybe a pre-ride group meeting where you pull it out with your group, with your group, uh, and you just say, "Hey guys, we're gonna go over this. Pull out your uh, your think cards, your your smart cards, and boom, boom, boom. You guys go over it. You have it situated. Never really have to remember much. You just pull out the card. You know what I mean?" Yeah, and this fits in your wallet. This fits in your wallet. Some DDFM flashcards. You know, I'm an educational channel, everybody. I'm not here making... Well, I am making t-shirts. I got this nice... It's... We got the DDFM crew t-shirts and everything, but... Um, it's more of an educational channel, guys. I want educational materials. I'm not out here trying to make t-shirts and hats and... And little, little itty-bitty booklets. You know what I mean? Not little itty bitty booklets, not an app that just copies my booklet, you know, stuff like that. I'm not gonna do that. This is cool. So this is actually a. I've been playing around with it. I got my uh, brother-in-law uh, one of these and for a bottle, and then I bought uh, Matt one. I got Nikki a bottle, and this is her can one. I my kids got me one for my birthday, which is in a week. But it's just a. It's a dual. It's like a vacuum and everything. It's like a it's like a little Yeti. Multiple types of cans can fit in here. It keeps your can nice and cool. Not sponsored by them, by the way. It's just I think it's just really cool. It has a little lid thing. Love it. Love it. Just wanted to share that with you. Some useless stuff. <laughs> Rescue keychain, like the remove. Hey, that sounds great. It would have to be educational, though. You know what I mean, dear noobs? It has to be like something on the keychain has to be like, hey, ride smart, you know? Yeah, you saw that, Raiden. Um, it's got to be something that's like, you know, ride smart. So it's like, boom, click. You know what I mean? Got a link for the cup. Uh, it is can keeper. It's a can keeper. They're pretty expensive. But man, are they great. You could like you could walk around with a beer. Like they have one that look like coffee. But you can walk around with a beer, you know, like at the pool or at the you know, at the uh, beach and stuff, you know, with a can. Obviously you don't want glass at the pool and 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 stuff. You don't want people to step on glass, but keeps it nice and cold while it's hot as heck out. Yeah, we have we have like two more mustache keychains. We might be doing some other stuff. <clears throat> Yeah, stickers are cool and everything, but eh. Uh, rescue phone cases. Uh, I like rock form so far. We'll see what happens. Maybe we'll make our own, you know. For the main thing, though, it's it's going to be educational stuff. So you, you guys are here to learn. You guys are here to do all that stuff. So we're going to we're doing more books, maybe e-courses coming up. Uh, we, we're hoping, uh, not hoping, we got a deadline. We're going to make it happen. Uh, by end of September, we're going to have an e-course. So we're working on that. What's the temp like in AZ? Extremely hot. I have no idea. I don't want to go outside until about 7 p.m. It is hot. Got up to almost 90 degrees in the house because our AC went out. Got it fixed, though. Got it fixed. Woo -wee. Guys, we're going to get started. Hey, Chloe, how you doing? Keychain would be rad. We got a keychain. We might make a new one. We might do new ones. Cat D. If everyone signed in, we would only need four. Exactly. Everybody, sign in. We're going to get started at, a, at 200 likes. So in order to sign into class, everybody... So before you can take a seat and everything, you got to sign in at the front office. You didn't see that when you guys were looking at the video? Uh, sign in by clicking that like button. We're going to get going uh, to 200 likes. Um, that's how you get credit for today's class. Okay. You want credit. We do this every Tuesdays and Thursdays, except for this last Thursday. We do this twice a week. 
for about two hours. Um, it takes about, you know, it's, it used to take a while to get started, but you guys sign in really quick. You guys are getting really good at it. <clears throat> some brutal crashes. Some brutal, Eric. This one was actually, let's go, let's go up to here. Let's go and refresh it because this is how brutal it is. Some brutal. Some brutals may not be appropriate for some viewers. It's a little bit brutals. How does my arm keep disappearing? It's a little warm, Jacko. Yep. It was a little warm. Dude, Brandon, there was like a it was like 130 something in Death Valley this uh like two weeks ago. Insane. 140 people signed in. Almost there. Almost there. Let's get some of the preliminaries out of the way. Once again, uh, we do have the Smart Rider ebook and we also have the rescue kit now available. We have plenty, so that it's gonna be a continuous thing. We're not gonna do pre-orders anymore. Um, it's just going to be continuous. So the Moto Trauma Rescue Kits are now available. So is the ebook, which is obviously going to be available. Ebooks are available for anybody international. Then we got Rock Form Cardo, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> We're going to be talking about this video pretty soon. My phone number, what? Tell, to, tell people the channel, but I started to notice that some people just aren't not ready to be smart writers. Unfortunately, yeah, dear noobs. And it's one of those things, you know, it's that's why I want people to watch these uh, videos because when they see the crash, it's like, I think I'm ready. Um, it's usually like, no, I feel confident in what I'm doing, currently doing this, this, and this. And it's it prevents people from actually doing the work. You know, it's that it really is a Dunning Kruger effect. Um, you, you think you have enough and you don't get any further education it's just as simple as that it's not something that's really cool or eh, it's it's a natural human phenomenon all right your number on a rescue case so we can call you if we need no i don't have that no nope, it's not on the rescue case uh we are sending with the rescue kits uh an, another pamphlet to show you where to put the tourniquets we're gonna get the training out pretty soon this month july is the month we're working on it um can't wait to get it out to you tomorrow i'm going to be filming a quick training video for chase on two wheels so that'd be fun and then after that i'm all it is for motorcycle training concept youtube channel is rescue training that's all it's going to be we have an accident scene management class with uh some crew members on the 17th so that's gonna be fun so i'm gonna be doing some videos this week coming up to prepare myself again once again because i'll be a I'll be a student along with everybody. So I'm excited for that. Did you change the live stream time or is this the one one time thing? Much love from Egypt. Hey, Solomon. Uh, no, this is a one time thing. We were having issues yesterday and then having issues today. I was hoping to get it done today early morning, but couldn't. So uh, we're able to get it done now. Right. Well, you do what you need, man. You do what you need. Uh, if you need to call someone for advice during an accident, call 911. Yeah, exactly. Wee. 150 people signed in. I think I'm okay with that. Make sure you guys sign in to get credit for today's class. We're going to get started on this. Let's. I proceed to watch this video. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and make it 1080p. Let's. Oh, we got to get my pen out. Let me go ahead and pretend I am frozen. So for those of you that are just now joining... Hopefully you guys didn't leave. Um, but when you're... I gotta get the pen out. I like messing with you guys. I like messing with you guys. All right, let's get the pen out. Let's see if I can. There we go. All right, so I got the pen. Let's go ahead and hit the start recording. Let's make sure we get go going. You guys thought I froze. Anyways, here we go. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, that was a T-bone. Left ankle and shin and 
need. All right, here we go. We're moving through here. Nice, good opening. That, oh, we're passing. So I have been giving too much throttle in the bend and the position on the bike that wasn't entirely correct. Okay, too much throttle. We got a low side going. Okay, sharp turn. We just kept accelerating through. No wonder. No wonder that happened. But now this is the bad part. When you get wrapped around those uh, metal pieces for that guardrail, easily split you in half. Seen it, seen it, not good, not, no buenos. I mean, look what it did to the bike. Imagine what it does to your body. Thankfully, he's walking around. Because at the end of the day, you guys, I, I really, is this the same video? No. Okay, at the end of the day, I, you can do what you want. I just don't like seeing people get hurt. I just don't like seeing people get hurt. I don't, I don't like knowing people got hurt. And it's just really bad. Okay, so when I see something like this, I look at preventable causes. I look at risk management. I look at what could have been done differently so that these people can still do what they want to do and have fun with it, but nobody gets hurt. That's all I care about. So when I see this, what can we do? So they're already trying to be as smart as they possibly can. Situationally aware, maintain fundamental skills, acquire and utilize personal protective equipment. They have you know, full gear on right now. So what can we do in case, like something that's above and beyond just having the skills, having the situation where it's having the gear, right, uh, is going to be how to rescue another rider. And that's what you do with accident scene management training. That's what you do with this channel and motorcycle training concepts. We're going to be going over more and more and more of the rescue of another rider. We have the rescue kits on motorcycle training concepts. Um, it's going to have everything you need for bleeding control and a bunch of other stuff. But then also teaching and mentoring. So when we see stuff like this, I want to make sure that we're using this footage. We're using these close calls and crashes to learn from. And that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, so we're going to be going over this. And what's happening here is that we have a nice space cushion between this person that's with the camera and the way up there. And also this person right there with that person way up there. Right here, we don't have a great space cushion. Now, a space cushion is going to be anything that's going to be in between you and what's in front of you. Uh, or even around you, but the one thing you definitely can control is the stuff that's in front of you and to the sides. It's pretty hard to control the stuff behind you. What's up, Cube in the Box? Uh, so we're going to be moving over here. Stated. And one thing with the situation awareness and everything is going to be those chevrons. Okay, those chevrons indicate a sharp corner. Also, we can't see very much around this corner because it's more of a blind corner, but it's a nice sweeping corner, so it feels like you can go fast, right? So these people probably knew this route. They, they've done this a hundred times. But complacency can kill you. So if you've done it 100 times, doesn't mean the 101st time can't get you. It's a whole new situation, whole new everything, okay? So be very careful with that. Oh so we're going to be accelerating pretty hard. MotoStars is talking, but it, uh, we're accelerating really hard through the corner. And it's nice and open. We are trying to catch up to people. But what happens when we, um, what was it, uh, traction? Okay, so what happens, I'm trying to make it so you guys can answer the question in the comments. But what do we have when it comes to turning and acceleration, deceleration? traction okay i'll answer it for you so if we're accelerating super hard we're also turning really hard we're taking traction from our tires if we are stopping really hard and turning really hard we're taking traction from our tires if we're accelerate if we're just turning really hard we're taking traction so we only have so much so if we have a massive lean angle and we're swir or and we're accelerating super hard we're pushing our tires to the to their limits so there's a good chance we could have a low side or a high side or just a straight up loss of traction. Also think about it. if you're going super fast, can you stop in time? What are your emergency maneuvers? How are you going to be able to handle that? So you're going to have this really high risk and how do you manage it with really good skill? If you don't have really good skill, don't be going this fast. If you don't have uh if you don't care about the risk, I don't know why you're on I don't know what you're doing. You know, you, you should care about your life. Anyways, we're moving through here. So he's going to be accelerating super hard, constantly accelerating, constantly accelerating, constantly turning, constantly turning. And that rear tire just said, screw it, I can't handle it anymore. And it lost traction. And that's going to be a low side. Now, here's the thing. When you're out on a track, you're not going to have these guardrails. You're going to have a nice runoff. So part of risk management is that you could push the limits. You could be accelerating extremely fast around these big sweeping turns and getting crazy leaning lean angle. And you're pushing your... Your track tires, which are very sticky, super far, super far, super far, super far, super far. And then if you low side, you just go into the grass, you go into the gravel, you go into a safer area, you have track uh, EMTs on scene super quick, everything, 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 everything. Here, though, uh, you're out in the middle of nowhere, you got at least five, 10 minutes away from any EMS, any help, anything like that. You have guardrails, 
right away. So if you low side right here, you're going to run into the guardrail, destroy your bike, destroy your body. So that's where the risk management comes in. So please, please take this to a track. Please, please, please be very careful with this. Uh, or if you want to push it really hard out here, don't push it 110%. Push it maybe 80%. Okay? But look what happens. So it's a low side. That bike's in uh, one single piece when it is right here. And it's going to go ahead and demolish and split into multiple pieces. Now, the bike is the bike. You could split into multiple pieces. All right? Be very careful. Out of Chris got himself a rescue kit. Woo! Awesome, Chris. All right, so this is uh, that's my jam right here. We're going to be riding around another sweeping turn. We got traffic. Remember, risk management. Okay, we're going pretty fast. Oh, it looks like we went up and over a little bit on that one. So I have a feeling that could have been a front brake. Um, usually when you see a rear tire slide out, it's going to be an easy, obvious low side. But when you see someone kind of lean forward a little bit, it's going to be more of a uh, front tire losing traction. So let's see what happens. I can't see his right hand. Typically, you see that when you're catching up to somebody and you panic with that front brake. So you can't really see it, but he's going to put his hands out and start sliding. Okay, so what typically happens here, just take a quick look. Just take a quick look. Yeah, we're chasing his buddy. Exactly, Gator. Look at the distance we have right here, okay? We have a pretty good distance. This is a good space cushion. You know, we, we're, we're within this area, so that's the, what we have to work with. We can either swerve, we could do whatever. We have to break in between here, all that stuff. Uh, one thing I want you to notice, we're going to take make it a little bit different than the previous video, is that we have that blind turn. So you don't want to outrun your vision. That's as far as you pretty much can go with your vision. So can you stop within this distance? Because you don't know if a vehicle is on the other side stopped, broken down, any of those things. So let's go ahead and make it a little bit different than the first one. So look how quick, look how close we are. I'm sorry. Look how far we are and look how close we're going to get. Okay. So look how small of a dot he is. Now, if you really think about it, you know, this is how close we are to each other. And you start moving further and further and further away, right? So they're small when they're far away. But then all of a sudden you start doing this to something. That means you obviously got too close. So you're getting closer and closer and closer. So right here, look how close we're going to get to him now. Now, why would we be getting that much closer? You see how you got bigger and everything? We also have that motion blur. Why do you think we're doing that? Because possibly this guy up front is slowing down for the turn. Slow look, press, and roll. We're trying to keep up. We're trying to ride his ride. We can't do what he's doing right when he does it because he makes the decision. Then we have to make the decision. So make sure you ride your own ride. You slow look, press, and roll. And then he uh, lost traction. Now, like I said, we're going to make it a little bit different. Look, at he's got gear. So your hands are going to go out. You're going to start getting road rash all over your body if you didn't have any gear. So got to be making sure you have gear, acquire and utilize personal protective equipment. You're going to tumble a lot. Thankfully, he didn't go into oncoming traffic or get hit by anything else. So wear gear, wear gear, ride your own ride, and don't slam that front brake. All right? All right. I think he grabbed too much front brake, Douglas. I think so. I think so. All right, here we go. We're riding around with a big mob ride. I'm going to try to talk over Moto Stars. Mess on the road. Okay, so see the space cushion just deteriorate all of a sudden? There it is. There's People aren't progressively braking. Look forward. Okay, so he, see how we're going to get closer and closer and closer and closer. Where's your escapes? Where's your He's checking his mirrors so he can swerve. Where's your escapes? People on the right couldn't escape. Imagine going over the bridge and the barrier. So the people on the far right can't do anything because they're not truly paying attention to their space cushions. And there's a big impact. Okay, so scorpioned it. Could easily have spinal injuries. We're going to barely talk about this. Okay, we're not going to talk too much about this. Uh, we already know. And I'm already going to get a bunch of comments. Uh, I don't know from Douglas, but thanks for the $5, baby. Um, we get some comments about how you don't ride these types of rides and why not and who does this. My main thing here is if you want to ride these rides, go ahead. But remember, be situationally aware. Have those fundamental skills. Make sure you wear gear. Rescue another rider. That's very important. So if you don't, if you want to do it, do it. If you want to do it, do it. But just realize the situation. Um, realize the importance to have that space cushion. Planning your ride. Realize the importance of progressive brake pressure and swerving. Realize the importance of having gear just in case something happens that you had no control over. So that's very, very, very important here. So just take a look at how small these people are 
and how big they're going to get. Now, that's the same concept like I was saying. It's like, hey, look how small my finger is, and all of a sudden we get really close, and they got big. It's because they're getting closer. So if you start to notice that small objects are getting bigger and bigger and bigger while you're going the same speed, you're not adjusting anything, that means they're slowing down. Now, if you're speeding up and they're getting bigger, that's because you're speeding up. It's pretty simple. It's dynamics of how you travel. So we're going to get up to here, um, and when you start to see that, you should be going into more of an orange stage. Orange stage is when you're prepped and ready for anything. Yellow stage, you're locating the hazards or trying to find them, and you're pretty relaxed. Orange stage, you're like, oh, this is weird. Okay, uncommon. Oh, oh, ah, making my gut feel a little weird. So then you start reaching for those breaks. You start finding those escape paths. You're starting to look for things to get away from. So when you see that you're getting closer and closer and closer, so look right here. Okay, where's my escape path? I can go left. What about also applying some brake pressure, slowing down so you maintain at least the space cushion? Multiple things you could be doing, okay? But the hard part is in a group ride like this, a mob ride, everyone's doing their own thing. So in a structured group ride, it is staggered. You know what you're doing. You have a pre-ride meeting. You have everything. So you don't have to worry about tons of these things because they're all taken care of prior to it. Now, you still kind of have to worry about things here and there because things can happen during the ride, but a lot of these things are taken care of prior to it, and that's the point of a pre-ride meeting. So we're going over here. He's going to escape to the left. Uh, luckily, he was able to go around it. Now, if you were staring at the person on the ground, you'd start going towards that person, right? Target fixation. So good job on this rider for looking for that escape path and finding it, able to get out of there. There's another person. So we could have easily ran into this rider right here easily ran into him. So we didn't stop. We swerved around. So good job on that rider. Now here's the other rider not able to get an escape path because he can't swerve left because of the truck. Can't swerve right because of the barrier. Can't stop in time because wasn't paying attention, hoping things would be fine before they got there. You can't trust that. You have to plan your ride, position yourself for safety, locate hazards, adapt to those hazards, navigate. This is a threat, so navigate threats right here. So good job looking down, making sure he gets a rock form mount, though ram mounts don't work that well. Anyways, we're going to be moving over here. Good escape path. Not paying attention to these people. Go over here. Nobody lo looks like they're all walking wounded. Maybe help them out. Rescue another rider if you had the kit. But that person right there, ooh, hip pain, arm pain. Thankfully, was able to slow down enough to where it's probably not going to be that severe. Whew. Helmet and gloves are all you see. Exactly, Kenneth. Guys, I want you guys to get full gear. Get full gear. Please do so. We do have links in the description for Revzilla Beginner Gear, which is, is inexpensive, but good. That's all you need. Inexpensive, but good. That's all you need. Now, if you want to have the fancy stuff, yeah, you're going to spend a little bit more money, but sometimes it's worth it because you don't replace a helmet for five years. You don't replace things until they start wearing out, but at least the helmet, uh, five years is when you replace it. These cows are very small, but the ones out there are far away. Very small, far away, Father Ted. Daniel, you'll be happy to know I bought your gear to Benjamin. Glad you got your gear, baby. Chris, what up, Dan? Just got my first motorcycle. I got 96 Ninja 250 because I was worried about going fast. I was worried about enjoying the ride. Already rode it once, and it came naturally to you. Keep, keep, doing, keep doing what you're doing. Enjoy it. Have fun. Go to a parking lot. See what you can do as slow as possible, right? Here we go. Let's watch this one. Here we go. All right, we're riding around. It looks like a Honda CBR, right? All right, so we're going to an intersection, orange stage. Left turners are very dangerous for motorcycle riders. Good job on the braking. A little bit of a, you know, uh, probably locked it up a little bit. Maybe some rattle from the ABS, but that's fine. That's fine. This, you guys, you know how many times we see this situation, this exact same situation, and the person is just rev bombing and honking the horn and then hits the person, right? This is good. If you activate ABS, who cares? That should tell you, uh, I shouldn't activate ABS, but I'm glad it's there. It's a safety net. So I need to go ahead and practice my, my braking. I'm going to go to parking lot, practice my emergency braking. Because so you, you can practice good progressive emergency braking really quick without ever activating your ABS. And that's the goal. But in an emergency situation, if something happens, it is so good to have a backup. That's why I always recommend ABS for any bike, whether you're experienced or not. Um, if you want to go off-road and stuff, ABS, hopefully you can turn it off. There's some different things about ABS and off-road, but street bikes, bikes on the road, amazing job here. Just watch. It's going to rattle. So just watch this part right here. We're not going to look at this. everything else. So squeeze. Just that 
that little bit. That's a little bit of the rattle from from the ABS. Maybe he locked it up a little bit, but that ABS kicks in and unlocks it, locks it, unlocks it, locks it, unlocks it. So he did a great job. Now, here's the thing that I want to focus on right here is, is what could we do better? I don't know. Not, I, not too much other than, you know, maybe wearing full gear. Full gear. Wear full gear. Like you can see his skin. You know, it's just a T-shirt on that right mirror. Wear full gear. So be a smart rider. Acquire and utilize it. Now, uh, part of this is paying attention to what's happening on the road. Ride within what's happening here. So we have an intersection coming up. That intersection should put you into orange stage, everybody. So look at the orange stage right there. Look, we got like, we got a, can somebody close the blinds? The blinds are like right on me. It's, Right in my face. Uh, intersections, orange stage. You want to make sure that you are paying attention and you're looking for any left turners. Left turners are extremely dangerous for motorcycle riders. Curves, failure to navigate that curve, very dangerous for motorcycle riders. So you have to be paying attention. It looks like a CBR1 uh, or a CBR something. Um, only reason why I know that is because we had that as a giveaway bike and I remember this look. Uh, it's a Honda something. Um, Intersections, though, left turners, watch out, prep and ready, going orange stage, cover those brakes, look for those escape paths. Did a great job with the braking, amazing job. Hey, I'll take that over a T bone. Right? Right? Good job. I need to get mad. I'm happy about that. All right, here we go. We're riding around, going pretty fast, terrible audio, but uh, looks like it's our own personal track. We went, hit some road surface hazard right there, a little bit of traction loss. You guys see that so we're hauling booty uh around these corners i'm gonna pause it right when i see that little different area of the look at that Woo -wee. so you can't control these things when you're out riding now typically with high moisture areas with snow like in oregon washington all these different places you're gonna have asphalt problems um those are not fun when you're in the middle of a turn and your front and rear tire go into that crack okay so same thing can happen out there uh, in, in Arizona and all these other places with tar snakes. So tar snakes are basically just filled in glue, basically. Uh, it's terrible stuff. It's not even that good. It's just like, it's, it's tar. It's just a bunch of, it's called tar snakes, guys. Uh, tar. But when it gets really hot, it gets really gooey. And your, and your tires can still get inside. Um, it's, it's almost pointless at, when it's hot for motorcycles. But he lost a little traction right here. I was able to keep it up good now that should give you a little bit of your brown in your poop in your pantalones so uh make sure you kind of relax after this you know take this as a whoo take it a little bit easy now take it a little bit easy now all right here we go here we go so nighttime a little bit of moisture so watch out for the visors the heck everybody what are you guys doing we're having a land party right now no i'm in the middle of class i know fridays we usually do this but no 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 no. you're taking all the bandwidth yeah let's let's uh hey yeah pay attention rookies Oh, yeah, yeah. I get, I get you guys sushi. I get you tacos. We have parties here, but yeah, we got class. That's the main thing. All right, you know, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I, I can't. No, I'm not mad at you. It's just been a frustrating day. All right. It's just been a frustrating day. Um, Just play single player or something. All right. Whew. Let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. What'd you guys vote for? All right, let's get back to it.
We're going to have to start this one over again. All right. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's watch. All right. So we got, you know, uh, no, let's just start it back over. I got I to get back into it. I got to get back into it. Got to get back in. Here we go. Ooh -wee. All right, so we got nighttime. We got water. We got, you know, right within the environment type stuff here. Okay, we got intersection. Lots of different hazards. This is the side of the vehicle right there. And there it is. All right, so we're going to be talking about some law of gross tonnage. We're going to talk about what it is that we're, we're doing here, orient ourselves to the situation. Also, let's be a little bit empathetic. Okay. So let's take a quick look. So we got some refractive light up here. We're riding around at night. Uh, we're at an intersection with a lot of different things here and there. Uh, you can tell it's definitely watering and, and raining because you see that mirror over there. So we're going to be going through here. So if we have low visibility ourselves, now think about the cars on the road. So we need to mitigate those issues. We need to be paying attention to other people out on the road themselves having low visibility ride or driving at night and possibly don't even know uh, what's going on when it comes to their own driving skill. Come on, we're smart riders. We can't expect everyone to be smart drivers. So we're going to be going through here. Now, intersection is definitely orange stage. we got to be prepped and ready for pretty much anything here, everybody. So we got to be covering those brakes, looking for escape paths, uh, also looking for road debris from the rain. Now, there's that side of the vehicle that we talk about all the time. Side of the vehicle means a path of travel violation possibility. Be in orange stage, exactly, Alejandro. Uh, we're moving into here. Now, this person is going to be into our lane. Now, if they go into the first available lane, they're going to be in our lane, right? So if I was this motorcycle rider, I would just move over to the right lane. You know, plan our ride, position for safety, right? We located this hazard. Let's go ahead and do something about it. So we're going to be going in here. You want me to turn Motostar's volume down? Okay, I'll put it down a little bit. Uh, we're going to go over here. Now, we're going to go ahead and fight for our lane. We're not even in that middle lane. That car way over there switched over to the far right lane. There's this lane right here, and we're going to stay in this lane. Now, what I see here is going to be an ego problem. We're going to be trying to fight for this lane. We're going to be wanting this lane. This guy can't do anything. He can't go left. He can't go right now because you're right there. So we're creating an issue. We talk about law of gross tonnage. Uh, basically, think about it. You know, uh, say a little toddler running into an adult male and trying to push him over. That's pretty much what we're doing here when it comes to uh, a motorcycle versus a car. Now, a toddler can hurt. You know, you go for those those sensitive areas. You know, go for the ankles and all those things. You know, short people understand that. But anyways, uh, we can't really do much when it comes to this. Can't do much. So this vehicle is going to win no matter what. It can knock us on the ground. We're going to be hurt. They're going to have scratch paint. So pay attention to this. So when we're doing this and just being a jerk, we got very lucky. We got very lucky. Let's not do that. All right? So what we can learn from this situation is making sure we understand the environment that we're riding in, low visibility, intersection, at night, with rain. Can't see very much through our shields anyways. Uh, then we also have to think about, okay, that everyone else has to deal with that. Everyone else has to deal with that when it comes to this driver. And on top of that, the driver has inattentional blindness, motion-induced blindness, not paying attention to motorcycles, trying to make the light. And now we're going to escalate it even more and have an issue by fighting for that lane. Okay? Very lucky. Very lucky. Let's not do that. Okay? Here we go. Riding around right yeah, here. That the driver who is probably busy with something else and goes down here hitting the biker. Okay. Okay, right behind us. I don't like this position. You see how we're right behind this vehicle? Easily be sandwiched. Position yourself better off to the left or off to the right. He's paying attention to his mirrors. Good 360 situation awareness. Oh, got tippity tap. Not good. Still, I wouldn't like this because we can get easily pinched and get hurt. Then <laughs> look at it, it says C. Yeah. Search, evaluate, execute. Didn't do a good job there, Acura. So yeah, definitely move over. Get yourself in a better position, especially for safety. I'd get off on the sidewalk or or just pull over right here. Let this person. Not gonna, okay, uh, I was hoping they were going to do something about it. That's a Toyota. All right, so check the damage to your bike. Check the damage to them. Uh, let insurance handle it if you want to go through insurance, but it's probably going to be, it's going to cost more with the deductible to repair anything. 
Uh, but I would still exchange information and not do anything with it if you don't feel like it. Uh, not a good situation, but I definitely wouldn't want to be here. So I'm going to go over to it. I wouldn't want to be right here. No position for safety. You can't escape anywhere. You're at the... the. I can't even think of the words now because the freaking rookies were chewing on the cables. Um, but you, you can't do much here. You can't escape. You are at their mercy. There you go. You're at the car's mercy in the front and the back. You can't do anything. I don't want to put my life in somebody else's hands. Move off to the side. Move off to the side. Move over here. Get into a lane filtering position. Move on to the other side. Get in a lane filter position. Something else so you don't get squished. No buenos. No buenos. Get out of there. But thankfully, it was just a little tippity tap. All right, moving through here. Nice cornering right here. Um, can't tell where the hands, nothing. Oh, side of the bike. Good job with the braking and uh, maneuvering around that bicycle. And then that person, oh my gosh, what is going on here? So we're going to be going left. Is this it? Is this it? Is there more? Okay, good. Thank you. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. So we're getting through here. Now, uh, let's see. I don't know what that sign says right behind Moto Stars. Doesn't really matter. But we're off in an area with obviously residential, and we probably know this area. So we know there's people going back and forth, you know, crossing the street. But take a look at this right here. We have, you know, trees blocking the way. We have uh, grass blocking, high grass blocking the, the view around the corner. So we have to be able to do whatever it is we can do, like braking, swerving with the speed that we're currently doing. So he's doing pretty good. He's doing pretty good here. So he's going, he's going. He has a good position. He can see, he can see. Now we got this person coming around, okay? So we got a side of the bicycle coming around. They don't usually stop. They do their own thing. So you got to be very careful with that. You don't want to hit a bicyclist. You don't want to hit anything on a motorcycle. It could really hurt you. So we're going through here. So right there, what he did was apply the brakes and straighten the bike up because he was actually having a good line. He was going to go across, realized he wasn't going to be able to do it. He saw the person, so he's going to go ahead. Let's go ahead and... No! Oh, I was pushing the wrong button. So he's going to go ahead and turn, 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 recognized, perceived, reacted, straightened up the bike, applied some brakes, realized couldn't stop in time, swerved to the left, then honked the horn when he was safe, and then he's basically back to where he needs to be. So all of that happened in a split second. Middle of a turn, perceive the person, got to figure out what it is you're going to do. Your brain's moving. It's going pretty quick. Going to go ahead and react. Okay, we got to straighten the bike up because we're in the middle of the turn because I, re I remember he can't apply the brakes with it, with it turned like that. You can't apply them hard. You do trail braking, but we're not doing that right now. Can't apply them hard. You're going to dump the bike. Okay, I got to straighten them up, apply some progressive brake pressure. Oh, I'm not going to stop in time. My total stopping distance isn't good enough. I got to swerve, and then I got to get back into my lane. So a lot of stuff happened. A lot of stuff happened real quickly, and that's why we watch these videos is so we can learn from them. And he did a great job, or this rider did a great job. So seize the rider, straighten it up, brakes, can't do anything, swerve. Did an amazing job. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it shouldn't have happened. That bicyclist shouldn't have done that. They should have seen both ways. But does that matter when you strike them? Doesn't matter. Got himself out of the situation. Did good. Did good. Did good. And he's just honking at everybody now. All right, Angel or not, here we go. Riding around, intersection, going back into... Oh, it's a lot of stuff. I'm just going to stay in orange stage right now. We've got another intersection coming up. We're riding around. Nothing too crazy. Good space cushions. Good space cushions. Oh, there's the left turner. Moved away from the grate. Keep your hands on the handlebars because you might have had to swerve, especially in this construction area. Now things definitely change. Watch out for road surface hazards like he was doing. And that was it. So let's go back just a little bit. So what I was saying here, he was maintaining a good space cushion. This is a good space cushion right here. It allows him to see very far, um, allows the rider to uh, do anything they can, you know, swerve left, swerve right if they had to. They can't swerve right right here because you got the cars, but you could swerve left. You can see that there's a truck here. I don't know if there's somebody right to our left, or right to our left. There's somebody right, there's somebody on our left next to us. There we go. Um, can't swerve. Uh, so what we can do is possibly slow down, accelerate. We could do some of that stuff too. So we're getting up to here, and we have another intersection coming up. And you see that 
he was looking at this road surface hazard, but also we have this. Okay, so we have two things pop out at us, and it's not going to be fun. You have to do one or the other. Or, I'm sorry. As a beginner, you're typically looking at one or the other, but you have to navigate both of them because this is the situation. So if you're a brand new rider and you see that there's a bunch of construction, there's a bunch of this stuff, slow it down. That's going to buy you some time, buy you some options. So what he did was he was slowing down, and he's going to go ahead and adapt to this hazard. Remember, planning our ride, uh, position for safety, locate the hazard. All he did was adapt. Now we have this threat, so we got to do something. Emergency brake, emergency swerve. But remember, intersections, we should know this already. Going to Orange Stage, we're prepped and ready for this. So he's going to go over here, and we're going to go ahead and start rev bombing a little bit. Uh, but he did brake for this vehicle. This is our total stopping distance. He's braking and rev bombing, probably pull, obviously pulling in the clutch uh, to rev bomb. Now, what happens there is that when you pull in the clutch and you give it a lot of our, a lot of throttle response, you're putting power it from the engine to the rear wheel, but then disconnecting it with that clutch. So there's still power wanting to go towards that rear wheel because you know giving it throttle, right? Giving it some gas, but you disconnected it with that that clutch. Okay. Now, what happens if you let go of that clutch? All that power is like, woo, gets shot straight to that rear wheel, and you could easily wheelie it or lose traction on that, dump the bike. So I'd never recommend um, rev bombing ever. It's not an emergency res response. Emergency response is going to be progressive brake pressure quickly and then swerving. Those are the emergency responses you should be doing. Rev bombing, take it out of your uh, toolkit, get rid of it, get rid of it. Same thing with honking the horn in an emergency. You can honk the horn later, but don't do it in an emergency. Get it out of your toolkit. It's not part of it. It's not a red stage maneuver. So one thing we need to be paying attention to is these left turners at intersections. Got to be paying attention to it because those will kill you. You'll strike it. You won't be able to stop in time. You won't be able to swerve in time. So slowing it down, being situational aware, seeing it ahead of time is going to save your life. Write in the comments if you started recognizing this stuff. Like you're out riding and you see these hazards. And you're like, non-issue. Figured it out. Saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Write in the comments. <laughs> and then taking your hands off the handlebars. Everyone gave me crap for that. But, hey, I'm not doing it here when, when I need to have my hands on the handlebars. I'm doing it when I'm talking, when there's no cars on the road. Big open area. All right? <laughs> a real bad motorcycle crash oh no watch okay. this oh dang all right we're gonna talk about this one everybody i'm not sure um right tanner like that is it's got a single sided swing arm how do you rescue him how do you rescue him what's the mechanism um, MV gas okay, he's moving Eddie. just means he's uh, got comment section oh i see left leg it is definitely a left leg but yeah that, that's pretty horrific oof Lucky the guy wasn't completely wiped out. So this person could be yeah. rescuing this rider. Look at the front of the silver car. Holy. Good oh, job. Somebody's crap. calling 911. Um, completely destroyed. He's hit that with some force. That's a real heavy impact. I think he just slammed the brakes on right at the very last second. But that wouldn't have polished off any speed at all. He's hit that with some force. Yep. But what's good about this is all these people that are um, helping him. All right, quick question from Tanner. Dan, Dan, can I use a Rockform wireless charger on your motorcycle? Uh, I think they have one. I wouldn't, I don't know. I don't use one myself. I don't have a wireless charger for mine. Um, great question. Sorry. All right. Whew. Here we go. So what's happening here? So we're going to be going through an what's intersection, uh, trying to figure out how this happened. and. Oh, man. So we're going to do a quick little thumbnail for, for Nathan. All right. <laughs> got to have some fun. It's a terrible situation. I'm sorry, but we got to have some fun. Uh, could he have done anything? So let's, take it, let's do it one, piece by piece. Just watch this. So he's going through the intersection. What is the light? It's, it's red. So that vehicle is coming out now. I can't tell if this motorcycle rider wasn't paying attention. 
um, or not. But look how quickly that thing just destroyed that that front end. Um, I don't know if he was supposed to go through there or not. Maybe not paying attention. Nobody else is going. Uh, I can't tell any of that stuff. So when it comes to uh, who's at fault, I can't tell. Um, but when it comes to what we could do better, let's go ahead and figure some of that stuff out. So we're going through here. Now, this vehicle strikes us. This vehicle hits us on the left. Now, we didn't even recognize. We didn't do anything about that vehicle. We weren't paying attention. We weren't even paying attention. We, there was no. It doesn't look like there's any swerving, any swerving or any braking involved until we got hit. So more than likely, we were white staged. So if anything, we need to be paying attention. We need to be paying attention. Um, so white staged, and then we got hit. Now let's just do a quick, we're going to focus on uh, rescuing another rider. Now rescue another rider, the reason why it's called rescue is first and foremost, now with, this comes with every trauma kit, by the way. This comes with every rescue trauma kit that's on motorcycle training concepts. First of all, after a motorcycle crash, we need to remain calm. So rescue, ensure your own safety, stop the bleeding, quickly assess severity. So remain calm. So if you're the person that's in the accident, try your best to remain calm. But if you're also witnessing the accident, you need to call 911 or tell someone to call 911. Ensure in your own safety. Also, if you're going to rescue somebody, make sure you look out for hazards. Let's see if I can get this a little bit closer. Make sure you look for hazards. Wear your PPE, which is personal protective equipment. And then stop the bleeding. So direct pressure, apply a tourniquet or pack the wound. Quickly ass assess severity. So on the back end, we talk about head injury, spinal cord, shock symptoms, and the, the treatment of what we need to do. So this is not a good situation at all for the rider. Not at all for the rider. But it's already happened. What are we going to do to help this person? That's part of being a smart rider. So make sure you grab yourself a rescue kit right now. So we're going to be getting towards here. Now here's that impact. So when I first see this, if I'm witnessing it, I'm thinking left leg injuries, left leg, left hip. So we could have massive lacerations. We can have compound fractures where the bone is sticking out, um, which could cause a lot of blood loss. If it's definitely the femur, femur, whew, you don't want to break that. Lots of blood loss and the uh, femoral arteries right next to it. So be very careful with that. So he's going to get hit right there. He's going to go up and over. Now, yeah, okay, leg injuries. Yeah, that's easy to manage to be for the most part. So we're going to be flying around, though. <clears throat> and then we're also going to land on that same leg that got hit. But now there's the compression of the spine. Now you have the, your coccyx, the, the bottom part, your tailbone being compressed. Lots of nerve damage there. You're going to have your cervical spine, which is your neck, to go down like that. This little kid just witnessed something terrible. That feels pretty bad. Um, he's going to land back down, and you got all those impact points. That backpack kind of absorbs some of it, so you don't want to have sharp objects in there, obviously. And then, thankfully, nothing to the head. Okay, but it doesn't mean you can't have a concussion from your brain jostling around, right, Jason Hall? Which, by the way, if you want to become a member, first member of the day, click that join button. Um, head could still jostle around, can be disoriented, can bad. have some issues. I'm not sure. Now, that's part of right here. We have on the back side right here, you know, head injury issues, head injury symptoms. We have disorientation, I'm going to read it off to you, disorientation, nausea, vomiting, vision impairment, loss of balance, and or persistent headache. Lots of soft tissue damage, exactly, Ang. Lots of soft tissue. Your tissue can easily get separated. You know, your organs, they're not just magically going to stay there all the time. They're con they have connective tissue that can get ripped apart with high-velocity changes of motion, right? It's not, the, it's not the speeding that kills you. It's the sudden impact and sudden deceleration that kills you. And that's because you have a lot of the the internal organs just being smashed apart. Oh, uh, smashed apart, that makes sense. That is. But how do we save this person? How do we rescue this person? Now, as soon as you see something like this, if you have a rescue kit in your car, if you're riding and you have it on you right now, go ahead and get it out, get your gloves on, start doing your assessment, asking questions, see if they're all there, see if they're alert, see if they can answer what their name is, where they're at, what kind of bike they're riding, because you can easily qu uh, quantify that by looking at it yourself, you know, what color is the bike, you know, whatever it is that you want to do. Ask them questions. If you're bleeding anywhere, let me know. You know, do you feel like you're bleeding? You go ahead and check their legs, check their arms, check their check everything. Okay, I can't go over too much on that because we do have the the rescue card that you can get um, with the Moto Rescue Kit on the channel on motorcycle training concepts. But the main thing here is to protect yourself. Okay, there's not too much you can do for this person other oh, than protecting yeah. yourself and then stopping yeah, any preventable blood loss. Just, I mean, That's I'm a big a, thing, preventable section. blood loss. So if his leg was just lacerated, he's bleeding out, bleeding out, bleeding out, bleeding out, 
That's why we have tourniquets in our kits. You're able to apply a tourniquet to stop that blood loss, pack the wound, whatever it is you can do. But it looks like he's doing fine. That left leg is going to be very painful. That woman over there is calling 911 very good. You know, I'd ask her, are you calling 911? Good, 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 good. That's the person that did that. We need traffic control. We need somebody to do an assessment. Don't take the helmet off. It looks like he's moving. He's breathing. He's doing fine. Um, you can just ask questions. I wouldn't worry about the bike. Leave it there. And then once this motorcycle rider is feeling okay, I would check the, the driver. He's the priority. or This rider's the priority. The driver is secondary because of the protection the driver has. But I'd, they are still patients. You still want to rescue them too. But crap, that's just um, completely destroyed. He's hit that with some force. That's a real hit. We're going to have a rescue course. We're going to have rescue videos up. Some rock, We're working on them for July. Second, but that wouldn't have polished off any speed at all. He's hit that with some force. Just make sure you don't white stage it. Uh, what's good about this is all Just don't white stage it. Are, um, helping. See, people want to help. All right, so we're moving on through here. I'm K. That's his name. Or their name. All right, not a lot of gear. The problem was the speed, which made it completely impossible to control the bike just before the turn. All right, so they're going slow. They're going slow. That's what it says. It's on their dash. We're getting right up to the turn. And we went up and over. So it was a single vehicle accident. We didn't strike anything. See, we went up and over. So we had good traction with lots of brake power. Oh, he's in pain. Look how far away he is from the bike. He lost he lost some air. He has bikes way over there. All right. That's an uh, nobody likes to hear that that gurgling sound. You're right. So the cool thing about editing and tracking is that you have to be good at it. So he's in sixth gear. I see like, a, it says like a hundred to me. Anyways, so we're going over here. We're going super fast. Let's go back just a little bit, actually. So this is the rider prior to the accident. Not a lot of gear other than a helmet and gloves. That is just a normal hoodie, normal jeans. It's already ripped. It's, it's kind of like he's waiting for the waters to get a little bit high. Uh, in regular shoes on a sport bike, very powerful bike. Sport bikes are very powerful. They're meant for racing. Okay, that's what they are. They're designed that way. They look like it because they're designed that way. Uh, so you can go pretty fast. Also, a very short wheelbase. So if you get a lot of traction on the front tire and a lot of braking power on that front tire, it's very easy to go over. Especially if you put weight over it. So I have a feeling that's what happened here. So we're hauling ass. He's going slow, I guess. You know, haul ass slow, whatever. Um, we're gonna get up to a point where we're gonna panic. Okay. Now he probably has really good tires, and then possibly got some good traction and you see how we disappear the bike kind of disappears so remember the gopro is attached to the helmet so the bike is staying like right here it says ahead what does it say ahead signal ahead okay you see where the lights are going to he's got his high beams on they're probably not even that well adjusted but he's out running his lights Imagine trying to break within that light distance. It's not going to work. Um, we're going a little bit too fast. Signal ahead. That's good Good signs that are letting you know that you probably need to slow it down. And he sees it, and he's going to disappear. So lots of traction on that front tire. Lots of braking on that front tire. And he actually grabbed it. He didn't dump it by sliding underneath with a panic. He kept squeezing more and more and more. But remember, he can only slow down with the allotted total stopping distance. And your total stopping distance increases. And I'm talking like really increases when you go faster. So you have perception. So you got to realize when you have to start applying the brakes, you have to react to actually start applying the brakes and then braking distance equal total stopping distance. Your braking distance is elongated with more and more and more and more speed. So if you're going slow, your braking distance is here. If you're going fast, it's way over here. Now, if it's this far, let's say this is where you, this is as far as, this is your braking distance. So this is when you can stop. Well, here's the intersection. So you, you stopped way too far. Anybody did uh, an MSF class and they showed you the braking with the intersect? It's really cool. Either way, he's going way too fast for his speed. He's doing good braking, 
he doesn't have enough distance, enough room to break. So when he sees that I got to stop now, he slams the brake, which causes him to go over. So he was good, doing good braking. He had good progressive brake pressure. He had good traction, good traction, just not enough room. So I'm going to go ahead and apply more brakes because I ran out of room. I'll just stop, right? No, 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 you still got momentum. He flipped over because he still had good traction. So not good. Um, he's going to flip up and over, and that's high, high impact. Lots to the neck and spine. And that is the loss of air. Your diaphragm um, pushed all the air. I'm sorry, your, your chest cavity pretty much collapsed and knocked all the air out. And you're having to then uh, try to get some air in. It doesn't work. It works with negative pressures and everything. Uh, but there's his bike way over there. I don't know how this was situated. I don't know how he got to where he's at, but that's how far he went. Imagine, no gear. Here we go. We're riding around. Hey, what's the pattern here? Big, long, long, big, op big open lane right here. Good job adjusting and adapting to that. Very good. Very good. Let's go ahead and talk real briefly about that. I know it's the same uh, person on this. So what I was talking about here is our lane is moving. This lane is not. If you're in this lane, you would want to go into this lane when it was safe to do so because you're a smart rider, smart driver. You're looking for motorcycles and cars. You're not going to jump and cut anybody off, right? Well, not everybody's like you. Uh, we're going to have people wanting to do that. So as motorcycle riders, we understand that there's people that wanting to do that. So we're prepped and ready. We're going to plan our ride, position ourselves for safety, locate anyone that might be doing that, adapt to it if we have to, navigate by slamming, not slamming, <laughs> navigate that by applying a lot of brake pressure by progressive brake pressure. Jeez, what am I talking about here? Anyways, uh, you don't want to watch out for this. This is the first thing when it comes to being a smart rider, situational awareness, recognizing that this is a possible hazard. Write in the comments if you've actually seen this happen in front of you and you recognize it and you're able to handle it. No issues whatsoever. So right here, we got this person. We got that side of the vehicle start of, st starting to happen. We have the, the wheels turning. Big open spot right here. Move over a little bit. Seize it. Can't get out of there in time, so he applies progressive brake pressure. But you see how he moved himself off to the side? Very, very, very good. He gets right back in. Pretty much a non-issue. Saved himself. Huge, huge. Did a good job. Good job. We're going to talk about the same rider going through here road surface three right there we got another side of the vehicle finding the escape did a good job i love it love it love it another i love seeing these good good ones okay so we got an intersection coming up that's what the signage says we got a lot of road surface hazards we got sides of the vehicles merging issues we have somebody uncommon thing in a common situation a little bit uh yeah so go ahead and sit back watch the dumb dumb do their dumb dumb things okay very good yeah uncommon thing why is there headlights in your lane facing you. Okay, here we go. Another one. Intersection. The road where the Side of the vehicle. PT doesn't respect a safe distance. Doesn't respect safe distance. We pulled off to the side. They pulled into there. Hey, you know what? Didn't get hit. Non issue to me. I would let them know real quick. Hey, you can't do that. And they'd be like, okay, cool. I'd be like, okay, cool. That would have been it. That would have been it. So very good. I use my rock form mount for the same reason. Uh, GPS right there. Very good. Side of the vehicle coming up. Good job with the brake pressure. I was able to get out of it. Good job. This happens, guys. This happens when you're out riding. So real quick, I just want to say congrats to Cowie uh, G6. Did great. Did amazing job. Smart rider. All these things happen. These, they happen when you're riding. It's how, what you do with it. Understanding that this could happen. Pos position yourself for safety. Locating these hazards. Adapting, navigating. You got to constantly do it. You're always going to yellow, going to orange, going to yellow, going to orange, going to yellow, constantly moving around, doing what you need to do, practicing good progressive brake pressure, finding those escape routes, having your head on a swivel, checking 360 situation, everything. Did a great job. You got to do that even in a car. But on a motorcycle, it's even more important because your life truly does depend on it. If you get hit, all you have between you and the ground and the car is the gear that you're currently wearing. So does that mean, are, are you wearing gear? I hope so. I hope so. Did a great job. All right, here we go. It's also Going through here. Come on. Kind of blocked in. I don't like it so because far. That turned on indicator means they have the right of way. Bad line of sight. Scrasball. Good job. Braking. Got a little bit freaked out. Not a big deal. Got a little freaked out. Not a big deal. 
I didn't like it. I didn't like it. We're kind of in their blind spot. I would have given myself a little bit more room. And one of the things is that you understand that that's going to happen, that could happen, so it doesn't piss you off. When, cause the reason why you get pissed off is because you got surprised. When you're surprised, you get freaked out. Pretty much think of it as a jump scare. Now, for those of you that, that watch a lot of scary movies and you're like, jump scares don't get me anymore. You kind of anticipate it. You know the the song, like the mood of the like the the music changed a little bit, starting to ramp up a little bit, and you know that things are going about to happen, and then boom, jump scare, right? You know it's going to happen. The ones that you probably like now are like the suspenseful ones that truly get you in the gut. You know that very very scary gut feeling ones. It's like makes you uneasy. You know it has that special musical tone that you can't really hear, but your body feels. You know like those times of things. But this right here, this is a jump scare that shouldn't be a jump scare anymore. I mean, we're off here staggered. Yeah, I get it. But then you should also know, hey, you know, if our lane is moving, their lane is not. And if there's an open spot, people like to find open spots. Now, they used to teach, and I think they still do, is that when there's an open spot like this, they want you to protect your lane by being right here. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. Because, you know, protecting your lane is one thing. It's like, hey, you know, now you can see me. Hey, car driver, you can see me. Therefore, it's protected. Now, remember, car drivers don't see us. So I don't want to put myself in a position for no safety because now I, I'm right next to this vehicle, terrible li a line of sight, terrible space cushion. I got to swerve in the last second. I would rather be back here. Now, I'd like to be back here a little bit further, but this is still good because if this person swerves to here, I'm still not going to get hit. So we're staggered. We're staggered with cars just like we're staggered with motorcycle riders. So with this, though, look at all this. You could swerve. You could swerve easily. What's another thing you could do, class? What's another thing you could do? Tell me. Write in the comments. It's very easy. It, ha it happens to be with your right hand. With your right hand. Okay? We can apply some progressive brake pressure. We can slow it down, allow them to go in. It's a non-issue at that point. Now, the only way you're going to treat it as a non-issue is if you're not going to be scared by it. So that jump scare is not going to get you. Because we're watching these things and we know that this type of stuff happens. Let's move ourselves over here so we have a better position for vision. We have a better position for space cushions. And we have a better position for escape routes. Line of sight is very important. Space cushions are very important. Escape routes are very important. I'm always in that position that has the best of all three. Do that yourself and you're going to realize you're not going to be as scared. Start looking at vehicles. Only the so right here, he's going to get a little bit scared by it. Freaked out as soon as that happens. Honking, whoa, slam the brakes. Three reactions you should not be having. You can have a whoa, but then you can just be doing what you need to do. All right? I don't sense no stress. I'm stressed. Past three at night, sleep. Hey, get some Dutch dash cam, get some sleep. Get some sleep. Ben Steeles, it sounds like you had a great instructor. You had a great instructor, Ben Steeles. And then doing this kind of stuff just makes people not like us. Here we go, the cheesy bikers riding around. But right after pushing in before the biker, the driver additionally brakes sharply. Okay, okay. So watch out for the vehicles in front of us, position ourselves. Okay, they're getting in front of us. Go ahead and apply some brake pressure because they're taking away our space cushions. So apply some brake pressure, position a little bit better. Very good. He did what he had to do, got himself out of there. Okay, now watch out for this merger. Okay, there's always going to be more and more and more. All right? All right, so this is what I would do. There's not much that we can really uh, screw around with. I'm just going to tell you what I would do right here. Okay? As soon as I see that one vehicle come in, and they start to take my space cushion. Now, I'm talking about me being as this person right here. I'm the person up front, okay? So, Nathan, go ahead and zoom in on that. I'll go and get myself a little bit bigger so we can make it a little bit better. All right, so what's going to happen here is if I was this person and then this vehicle went in front of me and made my space cushion even smaller, what I'm going to do is either apply progressive brake pressure at like 10 20%, not a lot, because I'm not trying to stop. I'm just trying to slow down, or just roll off the throttle, right? Exactly, Xavier. Just throw out, roll off the throttle because you're going to start to slow down from engine braking, which will then increase, let's go ahead and see if I can do that, which will then increase your space cushion. Now we're over here, so now it's better in space cushion. Now this person's going to come in too. 
Let's go and see what happens there. What's going to happen? Okay, so let's go ahead and roll off the throttle, increase our space cushion. Now we're definitely rolling off the throttle and increasing our space cushion, and then it's a non-issue. Now, it should, a lot of people are like, well, you should be fighting for your lane. We already talked about that. We already talked about that. Let's not fight for our lane. They're doing it anyways. If they hit us, we're on the ground. They're not. It's, it, that's life. That's the way of motorcycle riding. <laughs> you got to deal with it. Stop getting angry about it. It just happens. It, it just happens. But when you have the training and you're a smart rider and you can recognize this stuff and you just roll off the throttle, I don't know what I'm doing. Just, just roll off the throttle. Just, just get, it doesn't matter. You're already having a better day. They're in a Ford Fiesta. You're on a motorcycle. Here we go. 70 miles an hour. We're in the blind spot. Blind spot. Good job rolling off the brake or rolling off the throttle and applying the brakes. We got a little bit of water, so it did a good job. Didn't panic too well. Too well. Too hard. Too much. Whatever it is. All right. Did fine. Did fine. I know I'm making thumbnails right now. <laughs> All right. We're doing some wheelies. You do you. You do you. you do whatever you want to do. Big open area, so risk management. Oh. Risk management, but man, does that, that's got to hurt. Oh, left leg. Imagine your left leg planted. Snaps. Ooh. Ride with the revel. Welcome to the crew, baby. Ride with the revel. So he's got protection for his motorcycle. That's one thing I don't understand is having protection. Oh, there's his battery. Having protection for your body, too. So we put a lot of effort, a lot of time, a lot of money into our motorcycles to make them really protected. And, and we're stunting. It was so a lot of performance uh, parts, a lot of different things. What about us? Are we protecting us? Not too much. And I wonder if there's just uh, like, like a set of gear that, that stunt riders would be happy to buy. Because I understand flexibility. You know, you know, maneuverability, tactile feel, all these different things. You don't want to be encumbered by having a ton of, of gear on. I understand that you, you want to have uh, a performance uh, capabilities with the, the clothing that you have. But I also want the protective on it. So we're going to be doing some wheelie stuff here. Now, I don't understand exactly what happened and what went wrong because I'm not a stunt rider. So uh, I do understand with that noise that we went a little bit too far back, maybe lost balance. But this is what I'm talking about right here. Landing. With that left foot planting and your body continue moving, oh, easily damage your body. And then there goes the bike. There goes the bike. No buenos. No buenos. And then there's the hands that go down. Okay, so we got to protect our body, protect everything. Okay, we want to be able to keep doing what we want to do, right? We want to keep. We want to keep stunting. We want to keep having fun. Um, so let's see if we could do it longer and, and, and actually enjoy it. You know, you don't want to be stunting when you're, let's say 30 and having like massive spine issues. You don't walk very well, but you still love the sport. You still love the hobby. You still love the passion or whatever it is, but you can't do it anymore. So just take care of yourself. You know, it's a lot like firefighters like, well, I like, you know, to do this and this and this, but then they get, have lung issues. They have hearing issues. They get tinnitus in their twenties. They get, you know, bad backs. It's because they don't take care of themselves. It's like, if you want to keep doing what you're doing, take care of yourself so you can continue to do what you want to do for longer. So it's just, there has to be something. There has to be a, a manufacturer that makes protective gear. There has to be, but I'm glad he's doing fine. I'm pretty sure he's doing fine. Yeah, Woody's, I don't know. I don't know. Whoa, a little close. We're not going too fast. We're going, yeah, we are. We're going 100. Ooh, intersection. Good job braking, though. That's not the time and place to go that fast. I understand it's kind of fun probably on the on the bridge, but we're getting into a very congested, different like different kind of area. And going 100 kilometers an hour, um, probably not the best idea in that area. It's grease? It's grease? It looks beautiful, by the way. So we're going 85, and we're like, yeah, let's get some speed. Nobody else is here. We're going 110, and we got to slow down because we have this. 
it's, it's just not a it's just not a good area to do it so pick the time and place to, to have a little bit of fun uh, this isn't the area to do it okay you don't know what's gonna happen all right so this is not uh, this might be the autobahn 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 um break 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 you gotta find an escape path find an escape path found it just in case you couldn't have break enough you was able no and then you cut them off sure. don't do that don't do that now i don't think That is an American plate, so this is not the Autobahn. All right, here we go. Let's just take a look at this one. So it looks like we're go it says miles per hour. No, it might be kilometers. No, I think that's 130. Yeah, I have, where'd my head go? So it's 100, it's 130 easily. This is 130. So this is what I'm talking about. So how how freaking quick can you stop? Not very quick with 130. So we're slowing down as much as we possibly can. Now you see how qu quickly that vehicle got bigger and bigger and bigger. So this is what I'm talking about. Look how small it is right here. Look, it's a little teeny tiny dot. It's a little teeny tiny dot. So it's way over here, right? We're far away. It's a teeny tiny dot. So if you're speeding and this dot gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and then you hit it, that's a good indicator that you're going too fast. So it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Maybe we should start slowing down, start slowing down, start slowing down, start slowing down. Oh, crap. We need to find an escape path because we're not able to slow down enough time. And then you crash. Okay. We got to be paying attention to that. We got to be paying attention to that. So when we see this, we see the, the dot. Get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh, we're not going to stop in time. Where's our escapes now? Where can we go? Left or right? Because we're trying to do a red stage maneuver with the braking. It's not working. It's saving. A, it's buying us time, though, right? It's buying us time. It's good. You should still do it. It's buying us time. But we need to find that escape path. And he's going to start doing it right here. And he was, he, if he needed to, he was going to do it. But he was able to slow down enough. Okay, then he's going to do this. He's going to cut off the semi, which is, you never want to do that. That pisses him off. And then he's going to get in front of this person like it's their fault. And he literally swerves in front of them. What the fuck are you doing? the position so right. meeker extreme and i was like okay good to motor vlogging can be dangerous because it's taking your attention away road. whoa uncommon thing what you doing buddy <laughs> whoa what good job he saw it though right. uncommon thing in a common situation did a good job Woo. there's something in this sushi something in this sushi You know what we do. Let's get some of the better sushi. Yeah, we save the best for the crew members out here at the DDFM crew. You know, Woody Gamer Tag over here playing some video games, doing his podcast and everything. Hey, how you doing? How you doing, man? Yeah, you having a good time? Yeah, yeah. He's having a good time. Eating some sushi. You need some more? We get a rookie to go out? Yeah, we'll get some rookies to go out there. Uh, Rain, you got your tacos? Good, 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 good. Uh, we're going to go to my office. We're going to have a nice little chitty chat chat. It's a long day today. I'm glad it's getting close to the end. It's Friday. Go ahead and grab yourself a beer. We have some in the Chiefs office. Uh, only Chiefs and above can have a beer with us. I'm just, I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. I can't, can't trust any rookies or even senior crew members. Uh, hey, should we open it up? To senior? Yeah, I think we should. Raynan, should we open it up to senior crew members to have a beer with us? Yeah. You want me to hold your beer? You're going to get more. Okay. All right. All right. Let's go to the office. Go have some fun. All right. Woo. Got here quicker than you guys. Got to be quicker than that. Got to be quicker than that. Come have a seat. Come hang out. Say hi to my wife on the wall right there. She, there she is. Look at Nikki's Adventures. Oh, what happened to the chat? I swear. Rookies, what did you do? What did you do? 
There we go. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Oh. Oh. Where's my chair? My chair's gone. Yeah, who took my chair? Let's get some music going. Whew. That was fun. That was fun. That was fun. Yeah, rookies don't get beers. And, and if you're driving after this, we do have... You can't have a beer, but we do have dorm rooms that you can sleep in. So if you want to spend the night, go ahead. We'll put everything in the garage. Dear noobs, I see that. Nice concept art. Nice concept art. Does anybody have any parking lot practice? Yeah, we can do Q&A, Raynan. Great Q&A time. Anybody got any parking lot practice, too? We'll take a look at your, your, your writing. We'll take a look at your writing. You guys got a question? You want to hang out just a little bit? Go and turn it down just a little bit. How do you know if a helmet fits properly, Benjamin? Great question. Um, here's the thing: when I look for a helmet, I, I make sure I get the helmet. I make sure I buy the helmet that fits my helmet or my head size. So there's intermediate oval head sizes. There's round oval, and then uh, long oval. Okay, so there's three different heads. So long oval is like is like the head is like like that from the top we're looking at the top so if we're looking like this right so this is like the top right so this this is like long oval and then you got intermediate oval which is in the middle and then round oval which is gonna be like almost a round head so now that we kind of have that um if you buy if you're an intermediate oval head which is the average um and you buy an inter, uh an intermediate intermediate oval helmet it's gonna fit pretty well around the crown of your head if you buy a round oval helmet and you have an intermediate oval head, you're going to have pressure on the front of your head, the crown of your head, and then in the back a little bit, but mainly right here. So now that you kind of understand that, the main thing is you don't want to have pain points or pressure points on the top of your head. If you do, you possibly have too small of a helmet or you have the wrong shape helmet for your head. Now, if you have little chipmunk chinks and you're like this, yeah, 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 like this. It's fine. It's fine. You can get different padded, uh, different millimeter pads, um, and then they also kind of they break in. That part breaks in, but the stuff up here, uh, while it rests on your head or while putting pressure on top. So if you have it on, if you have it on and it's putting pressure, like on your forehead, that's uh, it's that's not good. You don't want that. You don't want that. And if also, if you have too big and it's like moving around, you don't want that either. Tanner, yes, those will those will go together. Um, we're working on them this month. We're having some issues uh, with the Rescue Randolfo, uh, Roberto. So we're just going to make some some others and then we'll just redo them again. Uh, we're going to work on a bunch of stuff. So we, we set aside uh, July as rescue month for us. Uh, I did parking lot practice the other day and realized my sporty is scary at slow speed maneuvers. Nikki, how'd you do? Nikki Payne? Um, what was scary about it, Nikki? Uh, your video saved my life twice in less than 500 feet on the road today. Had a lady pull out in front of me. Had to swerve right to go behind her Escalade and then two intersections down another one. Pack Rat 94 I'm glad. I am so glad that you're able to, to rescue yourself and be a smart rider. That's the main thing. I just say the stuff. You put it in practice. You saved yourself. I love hearing the story, though. I love hearing the story. Uh, yeah, everybody record your parking lot practice. If you have one, if you, if you have like a camera set up and you did a parking lot practice, send me the YouTube link right now, send it to me right now and we'll take a look at it. Uh, I want to start doing that at the end of, um, these live streams. I want to start looking at everybody's 
practice and I'll give some pointers and stuff. Because Nikki, like when you're saying it's scary, it's like if you went out and you did it and with the camera and say it was really scary and I was having issues with uh, my left hand of turns, my right hand of turns were, were okay, but still, if you, if you post it up now, I'll take a look at it. You know what I mean? So we're going to get, uh, Rainy, let's go ahead and get like a, a Google form going uh, this weekend. So maybe next next live stream we'll have something that we could throw out there for people to, to, to do. And we'll start doing that. I think that'd be really cool. Um, so one thing I like to do, yeah, so buying a helmet online is kind of scary because you don't know. Um, but RevZilla has uh, a chart of which helmets are what. So they have a chart of, you know, these. this is an intermediate oval helmet shape. This is a long oval. This is a round oval. Um, so one way you can find out is just go to like a cycle gear, put on a helmet and figure out what your head shape is. And then you can start buying stuff. It's almost like finding your shoe size. As an adult, you know what your shoe size is, so you can kind of figure out what to get after that. But buying a helmet without knowing your helmet size and your head size, it's it's going to be very difficult. Very, very difficult. Riding with a couple of buddies and got in an accident at 250cc, and two of them have over 600cc, so it was a left corner turn, and I was trying to keep up and dumped your bike. Eternal Chaos, how you doing? I know it was a, it was a mistake. You, you recognize the mistake, right? So, you know what? I don't need to tell you what you should have been done doing differently. I care. Are you okay? So I'm pretty sure you learned from it and you're sharing with the class. So everybody, don't try to keep up. I mean, you can. You can keep up with your friends, but if they start taking off, just recognize you're on a lower CC and possibly lower experience. And you don't have to. Having a good Bluetooth system, we use Cardo Pack Talks here. Just tell them, like, dude, guys, slow down. You dummies. You dum dums. Uh, what about corning vids? Um, I prefer more of the slow speed stuff because it's it's much easier to see. It's much easier to see because the it's all in in frame. Does that make sense? So Tyler Pippen, how you doing? I'm short and the bike just feels top heavy to me. When it dips into a turn, it feels wobbly. Just have to get used to it. Yep, more practice. You kind of feel it. Uh, do some counterbalancing and do some really good head looks. Uh, like really look, really look and counterbalance. Um, I, Nikki, I have a video on motorcycle training concepts. It is uh, me on a bigger cruiser bike. And you really just got to like, you got to tell it who's boss. Think of dancing. Like I tell my students when I was, when I was teaching at the MSF, dance with the bike dance with it and you think about it think about it, everybody dancing with it so when you go out dancing for those of you that dance but for those of you that don't dance you kind of understand the concept right um you're not you can't be stiff when you're dancing you you have to go with the flow of the music you have to go with the flow of the dancing partner you have to move like water almost with it you can't think too much but you can think a little bit right if you think too much you start to fall behind the music, start to fall behind the beat. You kind of have to let the body go. Uh, so when it comes to parking lot practice and then practicing your, your slow speeds, figure eights, your U-turns, I can't dance either, man. Don't worry about it. Um, I can dance with my bike, though. It's a really good dance partner. Listens to me every single time. I lead the bike where I want it to go. I put it where I want it to go. I tell it, we're going this way. We're going this way. We're going this way. But I'm going to look and turn first and then make it go. I'm going to look and turn first and then make it go. I'm going to look, turn first, and then make it go. You have to direct and lead it. It's not going to go anywhere until you make it go. But then you also don't want to be sharp. You don't want to be thinking too hard. You don't want to go too late because you're you're thinking too much and you went too late because, you, because you're paying attention. Okay, I got to do this and this. No, it's just go. I know I got to do throttle control. I know I got to do friction zone. I know I got to do counterbalance. I know I got to do head turn and look. I know I got to, you know, maybe even drag the rear brake a little bit. But just now that you know that, just do it. Just kind of do it. So, Nikki, you're going to have a good time. I know you're going to have a good time. You're, go out there next. Go out there. When you go practice, Nikki, on this next one, think, don't, you know what you need to do. You know it. So that's, that's already past the first step. I talk all the time about the first steps. So I'm always talking about you have to do the head turn. You have to do the look. You have to do. I want to get you to the automaticity stage where you're, you're past that. 
and it sounds like you're getting close to it. So what you need to do now is really just next time you go out there, next time you go out there, go out there, put the cones down, do whatever you need to do, set it all up and say, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do a U-turn between these things. Cool. Just get into it. Look where you want to go and go. Look where you want to go and go. And if it feels like you're going to fall in, okay, a little bit more counterbalance. Okay. feels like you, you didn't, you didn't make a nice smooth turn. Do more head look. Okay, you went too fast. Do some more friction zone. Went still too more fast, but now you feel like it's bogging down. Give it a little bit of throttle with some friction or with some clutch. So high RPMs a little bit sounds kind of scary, but you should be fine. It's your clutch, right? Just constantly practice and play with it. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Sometimes we get we get in our own way, and I'm not saying that's what you're doing, but I know a lot of people do that. Dance with it. You dance better when drunk. No, GG and stuff. No. <laughs> dance better when you're drunk. Don't do that. <laughs> Maybe put on some good music. Put on some good music. Put on your Cardo. Let it go. You know, not not that song, but you know. Taking your MSF course. Yeah, yeah. Full armor and left with only a sore arm. Glad eternal chaos. You you're you acquired and utilized it. You did smart rider stuff. And now you mitigate as much as you possibly could. Imagine without it. I mean, how sore you, imagine how sore you are right now. Like you're sore. Imagine it without the gear. Whew. Watching where I'm going is my biggest issue. I did find the MSF course. And I do find when I'm riding around my neighborhood, but those slow speed ones freak me out. I forgot all my basics. So if you're in a parking lot, here's one thing. You're in a parking lot. You have everything set up. Do, do a walkthrough. Walk it. Look at the ground. Look at anything that could possibly be a road surface hazard. Get rid of whatever stuff's in the way. And then get on the bike. So never think about it again. Never think about the stuff on the ground. There's nothing on the ground anymore. You know, you know how much runoff you have. You know that the curb is way over there. You know that that is way over there. You're not going to get anywhere near it. So don't stare at the hazards that are way over there. It's not pertinent. Get that, get that chin bar, get that chin bar or or your beard on your shoulder. So put that chin on the shoulder. When you turn right, turn left. Put it on the shoulder. Don't take it off. Don't take it off. Oh, all right. What am I doing? Okay. Thank you, Rain. This that's actually very helpful. I think we should do something like that uh, during Q and A's if you're if you're available. It keeps me on track. Uh, Dylan wants to know about trail breaking advanced skill. Uh, okay. So Dylan wants trail breaking. So yeah, I believe it's an it's an advanced skill. Um, we, I talked about this kind of briefly. Somebody uh, sent me a comment. Uh, BW687 on the Discord sent me a comment. And he wanted to know how I felt about uh, the two-finger uh, grippiness uh, on the brakes and stuff. Uh, I think MotoGP made a video about that, about two fingers on the brakes only instead of all four. And I, 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 I go, I'm going to go ahead and read you what I wrote him. Um, I said, uh, that technique is more of an advanced skill. It is something you should strive to do. I don't think a beginner should be focusing too much on this technique, though. Part of the goal of using four fingers is to remove throttle when braking. I'm going to get to that question earlier, or a little bit soon, later, whatever. Uh, two fingers on the brakes and two on the throttle can lead to throttle input and braking at the same time, which is good in terms of trail braking, but not a not good when a beginner uses a ton of throttle and brake at the same time. I do believe Moto Jitsu is correct when you should try try to do it but i warn against doing it as a beginner that doesn't have the fundamentals down yet so it's always going to be that same situation when it comes to uh trail breaking now i never say trail breaking should not be done i think it should be something you should strive to get your skills up to to do it but i am also understanding who my audience is and who are these people uh watching my channel and it's at least 50% not even riding yet. And then like another 30 to 40% less than one year riding experience. So I'm not going to talk about trail breaking. 
as much as I feel it's very important to have as a skill. So understand it's an advanced skill. It's not something I'm going to dedicate time to because my audience doesn't need to know it yet. But I do want my audience, the crew, to understand that it is a skill to strive for, but I'm not going to be the one to teach you. Um, it's a great skill. And the reason why it's a great skill is because it does preload the front end. So it makes that front tire have more traction during a turn because you're going to have weight transfer to that front tire at the same time while you're navigating that turn. So you're allowed at that point to now apply brakes if you need to in an emergency and swerve easier in emergencies because you'll have more traction. So it's a really good skill to have. It's not something that I would teach a beginner because the beginner is still learning how to use the throttle and still learning to how, how to use the brakes. I can't combine two skills into one because that makes it a lot harder. So uh, hopefully that helps out uh, with that. So uh, numb and tingly hands, uh, you're asking about, um, or Danner asking about numb and tingly hands. So bar end weights can help out with that. Uh, a little bit better bar end weights. Um, so you, they almost look like bar end sliders, but they're actually weights. That would help out a little bit. Uh, better grips would help out. Maybe a little cushier, cushier grips. You still want to have good friction and uh, traction, so tactile feel too. And then some gloves have that nice little pad right here. You have little fat pads on your hands. These, this is a, this is fatty tissue, and it's fatty tissue for the same reason that you're at, you're asking and talking. Uh, it's for cushion. So you want to have uh, motorcycle gloves that have that little pad right there, and that you can rest your your hand on that. Um, so be very careful with that. Uh, not much you could do about it um, other than those few things. Uh, Funny Boy wants to know if hand guards interfere with riding for a new rider. So hand guards, uh, if you're talking about the stuff in the front, like the bark busters, maybe the brake uh, guards. No, I don't think they would, they would interfere with a new rider. In fact, I think they're pretty good uh, for a new rider because um, especially if you're in cold climates and you have that bark buster, the big things in the front of the hand um, it'll block the wind so your hands don't get super cold. And then the brake on the right side, there's like a little lever that comes out and it goes out into the front a little bit. It prevents uh, accidental brake uh, squeezing from the outside. It doesn't mess with uh, you personally. Um, just bought your first motorcycle, a C400 upgrade from a Honda Helix. What an upgrade, Brad. Woo! Glad you're having fun. Uh, bigger gloves, you want to get the gloves that fit, Benjamin. Um, but the, the gloves have like a little pad on them that help out. Uh, do you suggest when coming to a stop, roll off the throttle, progressive braking, engine braking while downshifting and rev matching? Yeah. Calder, yeah. I recommend all that. Uh, you roll off the throttle while you're applying the, the braking, right? And then, uh, you, you squeeze in the clutch, the downshift, and then you match your clutch with the throttle. So it's not like a jerk motion while still, uh, progressively braking. So you're going to do a lot of your uh, engine braking and downshifting prior to needing the the brakes, though, because you're seeing the you're seeing it. It's a red light, hundreds and hundreds of feet away, right? Let's say you're in fifth gear, and you see the the light way up there. So start downshifting now. You don't have to apply brake pressure. Your engine braking is going to slow you down, and then you kind of close it off with that front brake. <coughs> What should I do if I will be the first time biker and live in the mountains where there are only twisted roads, twisty roads, uh, you trial by fire, baby. Um, the main thing is you can always add speed later, go slow the first couple times. Don't worry about it. Get used to the mountains, get used to the hills, get used to the feeling. You can always add speed later. Could be Benjamin could be. Just got back from ride, Sergeant Jake. First week on a motorcycle Honda CF CRF 250L. Ooh, that sounds fun. I kind of want that. Um, something small, something that I could just easily pack away because it's not so big, um, but just do some trail stuff. Live in the city and struggle with throttle control on right-hand turns. Those are kind of difficult. Those are kind of difficult. Uh, one thing I like to do if I if it really is super 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 difficult is. And I always say this, so this is my right hand throttle. So you, normally people grip it like this. So on those right hand turns, see how I'm kind of holding it now? So I'm about to do the right hand and it does this. The reason why I do that is because like, look at look at the forearm. 
So I'm holding it and right hand turn. See how it's like squished? See my wrist, how it's all squished? So if I if I'm riding and I'm about to do a right hand turn, you see how it's not squished and it's kind of more in line? Think of it as like holding a lightsaber. Try that out. Are Kevlar hoodies worth the money? Uh, so remember, Kevlar hoodies, uh, Kevlar is an aramid fiber, so that's going to help you out with abrasion uh, problems. So when you crash, you have two problems you got to worry about. You got to worry about impact and abrasions. Abrasions is where you see the road rash. Impact is where you see the broken bones. So if that hoodie has, has armor in it, great. The armor is going to help mitigate some of the broken bone parts and, and some of the impacts. The Kevlar hoodie part, the Kevlar is going to help with the abrasions. My big issues with hoodies is that they're designed to be loose fitting, right? So do you want loose fitting stuff to fly around? Maybe, you know, go up to your chest and now it exposes your core to the road. So the reason why I like motorcycle uh, jackets and stuff, they stay pretty much where they're supposed to stay. So I don't know too much about the hoodies, but if they're Kevlar and have, have armor in it, it's definitely better than, than having a regular hoodie. I still prefer uh, jackets, like motorcycle jackets, though. I don't know. Maybe they've upgraded them. What you say about electric motorcycles like the Zero DSR? I think electric motorcycles are, are really going to be the future. So I'm starting to really look into it. Electric bicycles are definitely going to be huge. So... Think of electric bicycles, either pedal assist or not, as as the precursor to um, electric uh, motorcycles. Um, internal combustion engines are going to start going away. Um, not in, probably not in our lifetime. They're not going to be totally gone for a long, long, long time. But you're going to start seeing more of it. So it's going to be it's going to need more training. So the only thing with like the zeros and the electric bikes is that you know there's no clutch really and there's no gears and there's no you know it's 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 all power with a throttle um so how do we train slow speed how do we train um the stuff that that we currently know so like when we do slow speed stuff it's always friction zone like how do you start from a stop it's friction zone how do you do u-turns at, at like an intersection it's usually friction zone with with throttle control how do we so there's a lot of safety mechanisms and a lot of trainings that are designed around the throttle or not throttle the the clutch so all that's going to happen is there's it's not it's not like oh man we're all doomed no it's just we're in anybody that's smart is going to design training around the fact that there's no clutch so when i see that these are going to be more popular more popular it just means that there's got to be different training so I'm hoping the MSF is looking into, because they're the premier trainers for beginner riders. I hope they are focused on developing training now. I don't want them to be too late, because if they're too late, I don't want there to be guinea pigs. I don't want people to, to be guinea pigs with this. So I'm already thinking about that. I've, I've already thought about, because um, I got my kids, we, we recently sold them, but I got the kids the, the EFTRs. And that's an electric bike. It only goes 15 miles per hour. But I was kind of understanding this and this and this, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, turning slow speed, it can be very jerky if you give it too much uh, throttle, even just a little bit of throttle, a lot of torque in it. So I've already I've already been thinking about what it is that needs to do. And the, and the closest thing to an electric motorcycle I can get my hands on would be an electric bicycle. Same concept for slow speed stuff. Uh, won't be the same concept for anything higher than you know 25 because I think they have like a limit. So, um, yeah, pretty interesting. I don't know where I was going with that. Uh, Travis, you sent me a DM on Discord, but what are your thoughts on Moto Jitsu exercises versus your par parking lot drills? You sent me a DM. Is there more uh, context to that, Travis? And I don't, I don't think of it as a, as a versus. I really don't think of it as a versus. I think it's, I think of it as two different people having two different perspectives on. I know, I know what a direct message is, but I don't know. 
Which one is it? I get, I got a lot of them. Uh, send me another one with a little bit more context. I'll get, I'll get to it. I'll send me another one. <coughs> send me a little more nuance. That, that way I can, I can answer that a little bit better. Yeah, I've taken exactly uh, eternal. I've taken multiple courses for that. Did I? One sec. Oh, I thought I missed a member. Guys, by the way, if you want to become a member and have that green, uh, and have access to the crew lounge on the Discord, make sure you click that join button. Uh, is there any problem with going higher gears to gear one to stop without letting off the clutch? So, eternal chaos. Um, only want to do that if you if that if that red light caught you. You know, you only want to do that if the red light caught you. Um, I don't recommend doing that all the time. Uh, but yeah, you could totally do that. You could do that. I recommend you actually slowing down with engine braking. And then and then doing it, okay? Uh, but yeah, you could do that. You can go from fifth to first, just holding in the clutch the whole time. Uh, just I I would recommend you engine brake and do it that way too. Uh, hey Dan, I'm a new rider, and people constantly drive too close for my comfort when following. Any advice for Mitchell V? Uh, what I would do. Uh, typically, too close following from behind. There's not much you can do other than just get out of their way. And that's something I, I would recommend is you just get out of their way. Um, the other thing that that I, uh, you can do is if like they're too they're in front of you and, and they're too close that you have full control of that. If they're too close, you side by side. You can always slow down and then get yourself out of that situation. But for the people behind you, what I realized is that there's just people that that's how they drive. They don't mean it to be mean. They don't mean it to be mean. They, they literally drive with having somebody like they, they need to have somebody that close in for in order for them to drive. They're paying attention. They're just it's not comfortable. Uh, move. I would just switch lanes. I would just switch lanes. Been watching for a long time. I love your content and what you do. Please keep it up and thank you for providing this content. Would love some beer tips too. thing is lush as hell. Danner. Blow dry your beard on cold after every shower. Combing out, blow dry. You know, have the blow dryer. Comb it out. Comb it out on cold. Every shower, after every shower. Dry it off after every shower. And then I use uh, Nizarol, uh Keto Shampoo, 1%, like every two, three days. That's it. No beard oils. Um, love it. Beard oil just messed me up. I think I'll go ahead and just answer this. Um, I think I kind of hear the the main the main idea when it comes to moto jitsu exercises versus my parking lot drills. Um, I'm just gonna say this. He has his own perspective he has his own way of doing things i have my own way and my own reasons he has his own reasons i say do both find out which one works best for you my perspective and my reasoning comes from uh the principles the smart writer principles i'm only focused on the beginner i'm only focused on making sure the fundamental skills maintaining your fundamental skills that's all i care about and I focus on rescuing another rider. So I have more brain power being pushed towards making sure you know how to take care of somebody medically. I'm also putting more brain power towards seeking out and recognizing hazardous situations. So he specializes in a certain area. I have a more generalized area that I want to focus on. So whenever you see something come from me, it's coming from the smart rider principles only. Um... For him and his stuff, his his belt system, I see lots of positives with it. I see lots of positives with it. Um, but it's only part of the picture. So, 
my Smart Rider ebook, the Smart Rider Basic Training ebook, uh, covers all the Smart Rider principles. I don't just cover how to do circles. I cover how to to be a smart rider. So it's just that's what it is. His book definitely complements mine. It's a good compliment. It's a nice little add-on. But my book would complete his. Uh, Pud Me Phoenix US became a crew member again. I see the beard, so you came right back, baby. Woo! Welcome back. Good, Dinah. Get the get it to pay for it. This is a car question, but is shifting hard? I kind of know how to shift via pedals by playing GT Sport. I want to have a car with a shifter later than I'm 18 or older. Automatic doesn't seem fun. Automatic is fun only because you don't have to worry too much, uh, Zenic. But I'm already going to tell you right now, playing GT Sport and you know how to shift with pedals already, you're, you're already ahead of the curve. I wouldn't worry too much about it. I wouldn't worry too much. Uh, I had a, a stick shift. I had a manual truck for eight years uh, right after high school, and I loved it. Loved it. But as so, soon as I got an automatic vehicle, I was like, oh, my gosh, I love this even more. <laughs> Prince Meerkat, quote of the day. Quote of the day. Love it. That's exactly it. Uh, funny boy, I'm I'm gonna I'm looking at printers. Um, the thing is, it's over ninety something pages, so it's hard to find. I mean, that's the thing. It's like my book is like what ninety six plus pages. His book is like eight, so it's very easy to print. A booklet a little pamphlet versus an actual book so uh it's like it's it's a couple grand just to even get a couple so um we're looking into doing that we definitely are though we are we we uh we designed the ebook so that it automatically would be able to fit and and be, it's already formatted for printing uh X-ray, my bet, man. Woo. Yeah, Travis definitely com. It would definitely compliment. Yeah. Uh, as far as the rider coach course, what did I find most difficult? Teaching, teaching a complex set of skills that. I currently knew, I'm going to speak from, from my perspective, so forgive me if I say eyes, wheeze, and use. Um, real quick, though, Clyde, welcome, baby. Woo! Uh, so as far as rider coach course, what did I find most difficult? Like I said, teaching, for me, it was teaching a complex skill that I currently knew to somebody that has no idea what the heck I'm talking about. How do you convey information that's in your head through experience to somebody that doesn't have that experience and to get them roadworthy in two days? Think about that. Years of experience, whatever your experience is leading up, motorcycle or not, years of experience you know you work with your hands you work with this you do this you've already driven a truck that has manual transmission for eight plus years you kind of understand the shifting so you never really had to work hard on the shifting all and you've ridden bicycles uh street bike like street bicycles uh like 30 miles a day for many years uh well not a day but like a week for many years so you understood counterbalance you understood this you understand head and eye movements you understood all these different things and then you go into motorcycles and you understand it and you can do it pretty well. And you, it's, it's almost natural to you. But then you're trying to explain that to a, a person that doesn't have any of that experience. That's never driven a, a standard vehicle. That's never worked with their hands. It's, it's mainly just, you know, office work. You know, it's never worked with big machinery. Things that are a little bit scary. Never had the, the fire academies to, to push you past your limits. How do you teach somebody with no life experience how to ride a motorcycle when all you want to say to them is, you just do that. 
yeah, just 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 pull in the clutch and the, yeah, just yeah. But they don't know. So the hardest thing is not riding a motorcycle well. The hardest thing is understanding how somebody learns. And once you figure out one person, how they learn, somebody else learns completely different. Somebody else learns completely different. Somebody else learns completely different. So you have 12 students in a class with one other instructor. Let's say six students by yourself. You have to understand how six different people understand how they learn. I think I said that kind of weird. Nikki Payne, welcome to the crew. Woo. You have to understand six different people's learning abilities. And you have to tailor how you speak to them, how you show them, what words you use to each individual as best as you possibly can. You can't cater too much. That's the thing. You got to find the line. And you have to do it with the, the least amount of words possible. So that's another thing is that you, you can't talk too much. You're not supposed to. You actually get a lot out of somebody without talking too much. That's why I like doing what I'm doing here because I can talk all day. I don't. I like teaching in front of a live class, but I have to tell myself to shut up. And here I don't have to, so I have a ton of fun. It's just it's difficult. So what what I would do, Dinah, and for anybody that wants to teach anybody anything, like your kids, right? If you have kids, you know, how do you teach somebody something? Remember, they're like little people that don't have life experience. How do you teach them? Um. Under, look up and understand adult learning principles because there's there's a set of principles that adults follow. They have to know why. They have to... Uh, it has to be important to them. It has to be relatable. Those are just three of a couple of them. Okay? Hey, Nick, you found the, the uh, emotes. So, that's the hard thing. Why do you think I, I throw out like uh, video game references. Why do you think I throw out like internet culture references? It's because I'm speaking to my audience. Now, if I was out in public, I wouldn't be doing that. I, I, I in a, in a class in front of me, um, you're you're doing an assessment of who you're you're talking to. You know, if I have a guy that that's showing up and he's got full Harley stuff and he's only there to because he got a ticket and he has to take an MSF course, which happens. You talk to him like he's a Harley guy. You talk to him like he has experience. You talk to him and you explain things to him in, in his tone, his way. And then you have somebody over here that's a 19-year-old a, a girl that is just getting into college that only wants a scooter because they just want to go from the from housing to, to campus and back. That's it. So now you got to talk to talk to her in the language she can understand and then you're also talking to him in the language he can understand but it's the same concept and same skill set that you have to teach both you might have to be a little bit more not sensitive but you might have to be a little bit more empathetic when it comes to her than him because he doesn't learn that way he, he's learned from from doing or something you know so it's like you might have to explain more with this you explain less with him so it's just all about changing things and I, that right there is i love i love 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 finding out like that's 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 like my that's my thing i love figuring out how somebody thinks and learns and how i can put this information in my head into their head and get that aha moment like, I love seeing the, oh, I love seeing that. That is like, that's why I do it. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be motorcycles. That's why I didn't want to stick with just motorcycle stuff. Uh, C C6 Tango. I didn't. Welcome, by the way. Uh, don't chew on the cables. I'm putting some, uh, some like, cayenne pepper flakes on the cables now because you guys keep chewing on them. Um... That's why I I don't want to stick with just motorcycles. I love the the teaching part. So the situation awareness is not just motorcycles. The the acquire and utilize personal protective equipment is not just motorcycles. The rescuing the 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 uh, the saving of somebody else's life is the best feeling ever. I want you guys to feel that too. 
Teaching and mentoring. That's part of the Smart Writer Principles. Teaching and mentoring. I put that in there because I want you to feel what I feel. Right, Tanner? Veteran crew member, baby. Woo! Got a nice mustache. Got a nice mustache. That's what I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. I love it. Matthew just got himself uh, an ebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Nikki, exactly. Exactly. It's crazy. It's like, how did I survive this long? <laughs> Guys, I got to get going. It's 7 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. I had a great time with you. Um, I'm going to be showing you guys what the Discord looks like. We're going to head on over to the Discord, have some fun. But you guys have been amazing. We had a great week. I hope you guys have a great, safe night. Have a beer. You deserve it. I'm going to go ride tomorrow, do some parking lot stuff. I will be seeing you guys next week on Tuesday. Bye.